Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. If you saw my previous um, video where I um, just shared stuff about my life and update and where I'm going, um, you might have noticed I was very excited <laughs> and I just can't wipe the smile off my face, you know? Anyway, I was wearing a really colourful uh, silk octane cami and I want to show you that um, and all my other October makes. Now you might notice a theme here and I, I decided this month to make um, a collection as such. It's not a collection but you will see that they all um, have something related each of the pieces and I can wear them with each other and things like that. So I want to show you the detail of my Ogden Kami and I don't know if you can tell how flowy this silk is. It's just so gorgeous and um, I've made seven other Octane Camis. I batched made them, like bang, bang, bang. But this one was special. I made it, you know, step by step. This was the first one I made. And um, I want to show you that big facing it has inside. And I put some bias tape there on the end. It's just such a gorgeous pattern. And um, I want to show you some alterations I made um, to this. And... So you can see what I did. You can probably notice that the strap is thicker than the ones you've probably seen on other people. And that is because I like to cover my bra straps. But anyway, have a look at that. On the arm side, I extended it one and a half centimeters this way. And for two reasons, modesty and to allow for a wider strap. Because the original strap on this is tiny and it won't cover a bra strap. So I've done that for modesty. And I've done the same on the back. I'll show you the back piece. The back piece doesn't need any changes, you know, but on the back neckline, I also extended it up and then extended it this way to allow for the thicker waist and for a little bit more coverage on the back. Cool, and I also have some pictures. I mean, this is something I will wear so much. It's just got so many colors and I can wear it with a red skirt, with a green skirt, with a yellow skirt, like whatever, you know. So very, very good um, piece for me that will, I will wear loads because I just feel amazing when I wear it. And that's the whole point of making clothes, right? That you feel really good and that's what this does for me. Okay, so I have, I'm not going to tell you how many they are, I'll probably just tell you this is a long video, so get ready, get comfy, get yourself something to drink, whatever that may be, hot or cold, wherever your weather is, climate. <laughs> so, I made another dune tank, you, um, I posted a couple um, days ago, um, a, a two versions I made, a tank top and a dress, and I said I was going to make loads more, and I am, and I've already made another one. So this is, um, I love this print, it's grey, it's a, some sort of stretch fabric, I'm not sure what it is. It looks like stretch crepe or something, but it's grey and it's got this huge motif there, like a yellow leaf on the front and on the back as well. Um, so I did the neckband no more but I didn't have enough fabric to do the armbands so I did it the lazy way and overlocked and just folded in and sewed it down and it looks fine it's fine I mean I wish I would have had the fabric to do the strips but I just couldn't get it out of any little this was a tiny this was the tiniest piece of fabric I did slits on the side and then the hem is just overlocked and folded in same as the sides here on the slits I think the slits make it just a little bit different and this is so comfy and it's something I'm going to wear loads. Um, I've already been wearing it. <laughs> so um, I've paired it with these really sassy yellow pants uh, for the pictures. So have a look at those. Next one is a blouse, and I made it. I made this out of a quilting cotton. 
and I actually a few months ago made my niece a dress out of the same fabric and it's this really crazy green print um, pattern on it I love it this is self drafted from my bodice block so it's got um, it's got uh, where is it this is the front yet yeah. I'm confused <laughs> princess seams in the front and on the back as well now why did I want to do so many princess seams because I was making this out of a really small remnant that I made something else and I had these long strips on the side so that's why I did all these cuts so the middle the middle part here is on cut on the fold and the front and the back but the sides here have these different you know pieces with the princess cuts I love the princess seams because it helps you shape the breast and everything really perfectly um, there's a facing in here that's got some bias binding there and little slits on the side so that is that it's a very simple top that I can throw on and um, it's cotton very very comfy and I love this because this could be formal or not formal depends on what I do with it what I put it on with and to go with this I'm going to show you a skirt so I have a, a yellow linen skirt and I made this uh, it's a um, pencil skirt and here it's got a, a seam with a little pleat there on the side so it's not in the middle it's on the side and I'm going to show you some top stitching that I did there and the back is just normal um, I also top stitched the darts down where's the dart there's a little dart there anyway the origin of this linen is from a dress um, I found a, a yellow linen dress in the market tiny size six or something really tiny little bodice and then it had this really big gathered skirt so I took off that little bodice and did the gathering and then I had a piece of fabric just enough to do this skirt so I have a few clips of me cutting this out and showing you how I um, came up with doing that seam there on the side and that little seam at the little uh, pleat right there so have a look at that the back part of the skirt is going to be straightforward, nothing special, just the center seam with the zipper. But the front, I'm going to do something different. So this is the width of the fabric I have available to do this front piece. And there's the fold right there. So I'm going to cut this. What I did here was measure from that tip there where the dart finishes to the center. It's 16 and a half centimeters, so I measured that here. And I just continued that line so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and then I'm gonna have two pattern pieces and that die at the top will be um, eliminated and included in within the seam of the skirt there I have my fabric all opened up so this is all the fabric I have here for the front piece and you see I've divided my skirt into two pieces so that is how it used to be with the dart at the top now it's two pieces so I want on my uh, left part of my body like if you look at the front side of my if I look down at my skirt on my left leg I want a pleat there so I'm gonna give that a bit of space there to do that pleat I'm just eyeballing that so I'm going to pin this pattern piece there and mark it and then I'm going to actually do that so I have um, my center piece there then I have to take this off and attach it onto there um, but just like a normal piece so I'm going to do that and then I'll show you so it makes sense <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is mark this pattern piece just mark it on the fabric I'm tracing uh, the stitch marks here with this yellow tracing paper. I know the fabric is yellow, but it's light yellow. So this actually does show up, although you might not see it, I will. <laughs> so I've marked that there. Now I just have to mark the center here so I can flip it around. My tracing paper this little piece has been used to death and it's a little piece I use to mark little things like this so 
this part is already marked. I already got the mark line in here, so that's already done. I can take this off. Okay, I'm gonna take this pattern piece now and flip it around and match that middle with that little line I marked right there. So now I have the other side and I've got a full front pattern piece here the middle part at least and match, make sure that matches that little yellow uh, mark so it's it right in the center now I'm taking my the same piece I marked on the other side but I flipped it to the other side so that this matches there. So this is my normal uh, pattern piece. Like this would be a normal one half of the of the front. And that is what I'm going to cut out over here. going to mark that little dart there. This is like a normal dart. And now I'm just going to freehand cut the seam allowance for the sides. this humongous front pattern piece it's so wide but this is including the pleat here I left 10 centimeter difference there the extra fabric where there's going to be a pleat so when you put this the right side there's going to be a dart here the normal dart but instead of a dart being there it's going to have that included there on the right side I folded it over here and here is that mark that little piece that I put on the side and I've pinned it to match the other line on the other side and over here there's a little curve and that's because this includes that little dart that I eliminated so when I put this like that um, I'm gonna have a little pleat there and what I'm going to do with that plea is what I showed you on one of my previous vlogs. I'm going to uh, press it like that, like a box plea there. And then there'll be a little box plea there on the side. Um, when I stitch that, I'm going to top stitch that there. And it, that will be the detail this skirt will have on the front. And it'll give me a little bit of walking space as well. I've already shown you on another video of my red uh, pencil skirt how I lined them and it's exactly the same that I did here with the facing and the yellow fabric there. Um, I stitch this on this part there to the zipper. Um, I don't do it by machine. And here I have exactly the same little pleat as I have in the skirt, you know, the main fabric um, because that allows me to walk. I mean, pencil skirts, if you don't do some sort of slit or pleat, you sort of end up walking like a little penguin, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so, this is a make that's going to be versatile, yellow. It's going to match. I mean, I like putting on like navy blue with yellow or black and yellow looking like a bee. And then I have that green top. Um that goes really well with this. So have a look at the pictures where I combined these two makes into the same shots. Have a look at them. I don't know if you're noticing a specific color palette here <laughs> but I'll continue okay 
The next one is a blouse. Now, what is the origin of this blouse? As of many other my things, it's sort of like a refashion. Um, so I found a tiny little dress, as again, a very small size, little tiny bodice with a gathered skirt. I took out the skirt and I made this blouse. So this is an outer shirt, shirt. So from the outer shirt dress, uh, the view where it's normal, like not the gathered one, I just cut it up to, it's quite cropped, but that is what the fabric, you know, couldn't make it any longer. That's all I had. Um, and I put little little wooden buttons there with flowers it's got some darts at the back that I added on um, usually without the shirt dress I've made I've lowered the bust dart so I've done the same and um, I didn't have enough for the collar I just had enough to cut one piece so that the part at the back is that yellow and this I got from a men's shirt it's a typical like chambray type yellow thing but I think it looks nice, and plus when I use it, I fold it down like that anyway. Um, I put yellow bias binding in there to make it look nicer, because you can actually see this sometimes if I wear it. You might see a peep of that yellow. Um, so um, the, other, the other thing I did with this, <clears throat> I had to do the crossover the men's way, like the other way. And it's because I didn't want to lose that big flower that print there if I cross this side over that side it was going to be covered so I just yeah I don't care what side it crosses as long as the, the print is going to be highlighted and I just love that big flower there so to go with this um, blouse I'm going to show you a skirt another pencil skirt made out of linen <laughs> and it's green it's very green so the front part of this skirt doesn't have anything special it's just one piece um, Two little darts that I've also top stitched down there. The um, interesting bit is the back. And so the back there has a center seam with a zipper there, and then it has a seam there and a seam there. And here it has two little slits. See? Two little slits on the side. I've top stitched that down as well. I, I like, I really enjoy top stitching on linen. I think it looks really nice. Um, so I did that. And um, the inside of this skirt is super cool. It's a shame no one can ever see the inside. So I'm going to show you the funky lining. Of course, this came from a nightgown as well. Look at this camo print. <laughs> so there I did the facing with a beige colored linen. And I did the, the lining with that camo print. Crazy. So I've um, also stitched that down there on the side to keep it in place. Uh, same as with the zipper area there, that's all hand sewn on. And um, the origin, all the, you know, all my pieces have an origin. I don't just buy fabric and make things, you know. I mean, I do, but sometimes I don't. <laughs> this was a green dress I found, used, made out of linen. And you can see the green is very bright. I thought, yeah, I wouldn't really wear a full-on green skirt. I mean, green dress, like the whole dress. So I chopped it off at the at the bodice length. Luckily, I have a really short torso. So at my waist height, I still had a lot of fabric to make the skirt at the bottom. So I just deconstructed that dress and I made this skirt out of that. For this skirt, um, I'm going to do different things on the back just to enhance the back side because sometimes that's cool. So this is my back block. There you can see my dart. Now I've measured the distance from the tip of my dart to the middle and it's 13 centimeters. So I just continued that line nice and straight all, that, all the way down to the bottom. So I'm going to cut this out and cut that little dart and eliminate it. And then I'm going to have two pieces. That's what I'm going to do. So that that won't actually be seen in the skirt because it will be incorporated into a seam line. So I've cut it and I've eliminated that dart and now I have two pattern pieces and um, there will be a seam there where that dart was and all the way to the bottom. Here I have my <clears throat> pattern pieces for this skirt. This is the front. That's on the fold so nothing special happening on the front. <clears throat> Little dart up there. The back I've divided in two, so the way that that was, that continues down, and I'm going to have two um, slits there, that's why I left the seam allowance bigger, right there, so there'll be a, a slit on each side, and there's a center seam there for a zipper, so there'll be lots of seams going on at the back.
and I think uh, with linen uh, it looks really nice when there's lots of seams so for the lining I'm gonna do exactly the same I'm I think this was like a man's uh, pyjama or something it was satin but it's got camel print and I'm gonna use this to line my green um, skirt so I'm just gonna lie pattern pieces everywhere these are huge they're, they're big so there's quite a lot of fabric to play with here See, I've got my back pieces there and they fit really well um, on this pyjama piece and I did not throw that bodice away because it was a size L and it did fit me so you'll see it in another thing later on in the video because I did use it as well so <clears throat> for the next photos I have put these two together and uh, for a really summery crazy parrot jungle style look so have a look at those pictures okay I still have three garments to show you the next one is another outer shirt dress. Now I will clarify, I have been sewing um, very limited in time. I have been packing and doing so many other things. I, at the moment, I am not making new patterns. Like I'm not printing out new PDFs or doing all the fitting process. I'm, I've just made things that I know because they're tried and tested. So that's why you've probably, the, the makes you see um, I have made before, you know? Probably when I'm settled into my new house uh, and have all the space and the new sewing machine and the time, I'll probably start making things new patterns, I mean. So anyway, another outer shirt dress because I really like it. And it's, this is the view A, the normal, the normal view, the one that doesn't have the pleat, the, you know, the cuts here and the gathers. So it's the same print as that blouse. Now I made this one first and from the remnants of this, I got that little other blouse. So I've put lots of wooden buttons, lots, I mean, how many are there? Like 17, 18 little buttons. Um, no buttonholes, of course. <laughs> um, it's very bright. I did the, you know, I did my typical bias tape there and at the bottom as well. This does have a, a curved hemline, you know. So um, bias tape hemming is the only way I can get it to sit really nice without puckering and weird stuff where you, that you get when you fold, fold up, you know. And uh, for this one, I did that at the waist, at the back, and my usual adjustment of lowering that bust out there. This is really, really nice. I love it. I feel like a jungle queen as well when I wear this one. So have a look at the pictures. another dress now I showed you the green skirt right I said I did reutilize the bodice so here is that bodice see all those details of the pleats there even has a brand there I don't know what that is size L now don't think I just chopped the bodice off and attached on a skirt I had to make basically redo and refit the whole thing on me <laughs> I had to reshape the princess seams here in the front they were just bagging everywhere it was just not nice this was a sleeveless um, it was a sleeveless dress you know it was like that but I still had to take out the bias tape and do it all over again because I had to modify all these seams here and this has um, the princess seams at the back as well I also had to modify these and the side seam so basically yeah I modified the whole arm hole I you know I did it again and I put the bias tape on and I hand stitched it down because I didn't want to have visible stitching there I didn't like that look um, so yeah uh, that is the bodice of that dress and then I attached on this flowy chiffon print with green and brown so this is this is a bit sheer you know <laughs> so I have a beige colored slip that I can wear under this so that my skirt portion is covered because the dress is not lined um, I love it, it's really flowy and um, 
I can wear this with a brown jacket and like brown shoes and a brown handbag, whatever. I just really like it. And I think when you've got such bright colors like this, I would wear it as a bodice, but I wouldn't wear the whole piece like that. You know, I, I like the combination of the solids with the prints. Uh, it tones it down a little bit, especially with colors like these. Have a look at the pictures. The skirt is uh, very simple and um, if you see my video of sewing the seam dress uh, it's exactly the same way I did it I just uh, put my um, block on the fabric as wide as it would go and any excess turned into a pleat so I have a pleat at the front there on each side that meets with that seam there the princess seam and exactly the same at the back there's a pleat there that matches that seam and a pleat there that matches that seam and I do have that hip curve there on the skirt. I don't like just cutting a square and then putting on the pleats. I like having the hip curves on the side and then the excess comes from the middle. So that is just easy peasy. That's how I did that. And I love it. And I have saved the best for last. Now this one um, is not made out of thrifted fabric or, or thrifted clothes or anything. This is actually made out of normal fabric that I bought in a shop. <laughs> so... Um, I showed you one of my last fabric hauls from Cochabamba, from the city, where I, I found a new fabric shop I'd never been to, and it was basically, that was the first and last time I ever went there, because I'm not going back there, and I found a really nice uh, stretch crepe, um, green, with a bunch of leaves, and it's got a black background with all the green leaves and yellow, um, so I made this dress that is self-drafted, um, I have a, a, a bodice a pattern that I made from my bodice block that has princess seams and the strappy sort of look. But this is exactly how I want this type of dress to be. It hits the exact width to cover my bra straps. It's got the exact width there so that my straps are three centimeters wide to cover my bra straps. At the back, it's got exactly the depth I, depth I want. I mean, this is the beauty of self-drafting. So you have something in your mind and how it wants, how you want it to look on yourself and that is the beauty of making it yourself because you're going to end up with exactly what you want. And there's things that you do trial and error, you make your like prototype and then when you have it ready, it is my baby. My baby. I love that little pattern. It will travel with me wherever I go and if my body shapes a uh, changes a little bit, I can do tweaks here and there, you know, but yeah. It's got the exact height of my waist, of my short waist. It's already got the sway back adjustment at the back. I mean, it's got everything. So when I make these types of dresses, I don't even need to do a fitting. I just basically cut it, sew it, put it on, and I'm good to go. And that is the type of sewing I need right now when I'm pressed for time and I'm doing other things. And sewing is like my relief, <laughs> my stress relief. And I don't want to be dealing with making new things and like altering and fitting and doing all that. And this print really doesn't need any more, it just needs a simple dress like this. So this dress is cut at the, at the waistline and then it's got attached on a skirt, a pencil skirt similar to what I do. And it's got a little pleat here where it meets that princess seam line there and a little pleat there. Now I didn't do a pleat at the back, I just did a normal dart for the skirt portion that I, it's like, um, you, can, you can't see it because the print, but they match up perfectly there. There's a dot on the back there and a dot on the skirt there. And that's it really, very simple, but the print doesn't really need any more elaborate design than that because it just shows off itself. And I absolutely love it. I finished this like two days ago and I just can't wait to wear it out. I know I'm gonna get stairs because it's like a wow dress, you know, at least for me. <laughs> so yeah, have a look at these pictures. Why did I make all, this, all these colors, you know? Um, I'm gonna pop a picture here. 
green and yellow is the color of the Brazilian flag. <laughs> so this is a Brazilian inspired collection, a uh, Brazilian color flag sort of thing. And, and their flag really does match their country. I mean, they have so much jungle and Amazon and green. Uh, there's lots of green in that country where I'm going to live in. It's just green and rolling like rolling hills of green. It's very beautiful So that's why I decided to make this all these pieces that are like green and yellow sort of thing um, Now in real life, I probably wouldn't pair them the way I paired them here I probably would tone them down with like other colors like navy blue or black or whatever But the dresses I did you just wear them on their own, right? Uh, and I think I can rock those colors I hope you enjoyed and found this interesting. Um, leave me comments, anything, questions, I'm happy to answer. And I hope you can understand that it, the vlogs won't be coming that frequent now. But, you know, I'm in a hard, hard stage of my life. <laughs> Bye.